Do you guys skip my intro on Setup Wars? I'm just curious. If so, do you skip to the intro animation or do you skip straight to the setups? Because sometimes I feel like I'm just talking to myself in the beginning of my Setup Wars show. But anyways, let me know what you guys do in the comment section. <laughs> Anyways, welcome to Setup Wars episode 113, where you submit your desk setup to get featured on the channel. Let's just let, let the Setup Wars begin. Kicking off the episode, we got Chris and his sick custom superhero PC desk setup featuring a 55-inch Samsung TV up top. The popular 34-inch ultra-wide gaming monitor from ASUS. This is the PG348Q, which by the way I featured in my Wolverine setup. Excellent choice. On the surface, it looks pretty straightforward. We got the Corsair K95 keyboard with a Razer Ouroboros mouse and some Altec Lansing speakers. Obviously, I don't agree with the placement of the speakers since it's right in front of the monitor, but everything else is looking good. The desk is also custom made and built from scratch. So check this out guys, it's got programmable RGB lighting, we got leather interior for the drawers and a slit underneath the monitor to hide the keyboard and mouse cable. But what I like most about it is the glass encasing on the right side showing off his Beast PC. It's got a 6700K and an ASUS GTX 1080. The colors are all over the place, so I'm gonna assume that this has an RGB color scheme with a hint of a superhero theme. The organization inside the drawers and the cable management under the desk is excellent and I like that he added a USB hub on the side for easy access. A very nice custom built setup, thank you Chris for entering. Joseph made it to Setup Wars because he has my face on one of his monitors. Looks like he figured out the secret on how to get accepted. I'm just kidding guys, whatever you do, don't put a video still of my face on your monitors. <laughs> Nobody wants to see that ugly mug. We would much prefer to see a dope ass wallpaper, just like your Power Rangers wallpapers on your monitors. Although it kind of matches your setup's color scheme now that I look at it a bit more, with my black and red foams in the background and my blue shirt matching the blue shoe boxes you got on the right side. <laughs> Maybe this was done on purpose, I don't know. But anyways, we got two 24 inch Samsung monitors hooked up to the Wally mount and above that we got a 40 inch 4K TV from Samsung. The surface of the desk is very clean and symmetrical, good work on the cables for the K70 keyboard and the G502 mouse. He's also rocking a D-brand skinned PS4 on the left side and a few Power Ranger figurines to contribute to the personality aspect of the setup. For audio, he's rocking the Logitech Z213 speakers and the Astro A40s that are hanging from the bottom of the desk. Superb work with the cable management, this is what I love to see. All the wires are off the ground and notice how he even attached his subwoofer underneath the table. A lot of 3M tape was definitely used to make this happen. He hooked up his RGB remote, a power strip, a USB hub, and even an SD card reader. If you want to keep the surface of your desk as clean as Joseph's, you gotta mount those small things on the side or even underneath your desk. Setup Tips 101, that's what this show is about. And finally we got the PC that's powering everything, it's got a 6700K and an MSI GTX 1070 with exquisite cable management. Personally, I think that a Red Ranger figurine would have been a better option instead of Deadpool since you kind of have a Power Rangers theme going on already, but it's badass the way it is anyways, thank you Joseph for entering. This next setup from Mark is put together very well, it's got function and I really like the way he organized the stuff on his desk. So he's got two 27 inch AOC monitors hooked up on a desk mount and the K70 keyboard with scimitar RGB mouse below. The desk was custom made and it's 2 inches thick with a length of 75 inches. He also built it with his grandfather so he doesn't want to drill any holes for the keyboard and mouse, which I can understand. I also like how he ran the keyboard wired through a pyramid of center blocks that he built on his desk, I think that's pretty cool. For audio, he's got the Mackie CR3 limited edition gold trim monitor speakers. We also got the Bose SoundTrue 2 headphones and an MXRL microphone that's been custom skinned in black with D-Brand. If you guys have your speakers on its sides like Mark does, please use some sort of foam underneath them like he did. Believe it or not, it does make a difference in the sound output depending on the surface of your desk. Speaking of making a difference, I like the placement of the microphone. It's way back there in the corner, not taking up any extra space when it's not being used. And also the placement of the audio interface as well. It's right under his desk and closer to him so that he can plug his headphones in whenever he does end up using it. Beautiful work with the cable management under his desk as well as inside his all black PC. Mark is definitely one of the very few people who use stock PSU cables and make it look so good. 
A beautiful setup with symmetry and purpose, although the monitors aren't exactly symmetrical with the blinds, but that's my OCD talking. Thank you, Mark, for entering. Speaking of symmetry, this setup from Scott doesn't have any. The main monitor is the 34 inch ultrawide from LG, and the vertical one on the side is a 27 inch from Asus. He's got both of them mounted against the wall, which looks very clean, and below that we got the Vortex Poker keyboard and the Logitech G900 mouse. By the way, I really like your wireless charging setup for your smartphone. So he's got a Qi charger that's hooked up to a micro USB cable, which he tucked in very close to his keyboard, and then he routed those cables through the hole right next to his keyboard. That's definitely one way to do it. He's also got quite a few audio sources, the Kanto YU3 speakers up top, and also a pair of M50s, Astro A40s, and a Hi-Fi Man HE350s hanging from the right side. And speaking of audio, he's also got a Sony soundbar that's hooked up to his 60-inch Sharp TV for console gaming, and he doesn't discriminate because he's rocking both PS4 and Xbox One, which by the way are skinned by D-Brands. Cable management surprisingly isn't bad, considering he's got a lot of tech. I see some cable raceways, velcro straps that are wrapped around the legs of the desk. Great work, my dude. And to top it off, he's even got a badass PC to complement his entire gaming room setup. It's equipped with a 6700K, 32 gigs of RAM, and a GTX 1080 Founders Edition. But I'm kind of curious as to why you have a quad-core processor with that much RAM. I mean, if you need 32 gigs of RAM, chances are you are doing CPU-heavy tasks, whether it's graphic design, 3D modeling, or just editing videos. But if that's the case, I would definitely up the core count in your CPU as well. It will definitely help. But I'm pretty sure you know what you're doing, after all you are subscribed to TechSource, but this is definitely a badass gaming room slash battle station. Thank you Scott for entering. Finishing up the episode, we have a clean and minimalistic setup from Seabass, not a single wire in sight. The cable management game up here is on point. Although under the desk is a different story. I mean sure, all the wires are off the ground, but it's kind of a mess up here. I feel like he took the hard way and manually nailed some cable hooks up there with some velcro straps to hold up the wires. Honestly, a much easier way to contain all of that nonsense up there is a signum rack from Ikea, or if you want a much cleaner look, a channel raceway will do the job. It also looks like the setup is being powered by a 2014 MacBook Air, and it's interesting to see that a MacBook is stored underneath the desk instead of above. By the way, that's one cool decal on your MacBook. Finally, someone who doesn't use mainstream overused fake IKEA plants. Nope, this dude got himself two dragon trees instead. I also love how almost everything is in white. We got the Kanto YU2 speakers, LED lamp, the headphone hanger, and even those pots that are holding the plants. Not to mention the Apple wireless keyboard and mouse, but there's really not much else to say. It's a very clean and minimalistic setup. Thank you, Seabass, for entering. So before I head out, I want to give a huge thanks to the sponsor of this episode, Skull Candy, and they sent out their new Crusher wireless headphones. And long story short, guys, I love these things. So the catchphrase for these headphones is bass you can feel. And let me tell you guys, that's no joke. You can literally feel the vibrations of the ear cups. It feels like you're in your friend's car and he's blasting the music to max. They're calling it stereo haptic bass. You know when the bass is so loud that you can actually feel the vibrations around your body and even in your ears? That's what it feels like using these headphones. If you feel like the bass is too overpowering, which it definitely might be for some, then you can adjust it by using the slider near the back to find a level that you're happy with. Personally, halfway down is a sweet spot for me, and anything higher is too hardcore. These are definitely premium headphones. You get extremely comfortable memory foam cushions that go fully around the ears, it also provides excellent noise isolation, and like most wireless headphones, it comes with a built-in mic and a spare aux cable in case you run out of battery. And speaking of battery life, you get up to 40 hours of it. That's crazy. If you guys really want that immersive experience and love EDM or hip-hop or just bass-heavy music and movies, then honestly, you have to check out these headphones. I mean, even though they sponsored this episode of Setup Wars, I am legit gonna be using these as my main pair of wireless headphones. They are that good. And just for my subscribers out there, you guys can get 20% off these headphones if you use the code CRUSHER20-2. I'm pretty confident you guys are going to love the quality of these headphones, and if you don't, well, you can always send them back for a full refund. But that pretty much wraps up the video. As always, drop your comments down below on who you think has the best desk setup, and announce the winners on Twitter and Instagram accounts. Thank you guys so much for watching. I will see you in the next one.